So the next topic is the topic, the hot button topic of oh. reformed theology. Uh. What is Lamp Mode's take on reformed theology? I think I think uh, to an extent, like the one of the questions that has to come along with that is what is reformed theology, mm -hmm. yeah. especially for me, because. I've been in circles with cats who who subscribe to uh, you know reformed theology for a minute, but to an extent, there's still a great deal to which I don't even really know for sure what it is. Cause right. cause because I'm not necessarily somebody who's gone after and said, yeah, I'm about reformed theology. Um, the lack of zeal causes a lack of knowledge in the sense that I haven't gone after and said this is what it is. I hear people telling me what it is all the time, and a lot of their answers are different. So right. in the process, what I get is, well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, right. I mean, I guess I'm kind of reformed. People have told me I'm reformed, people have told me I'm not. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, whatever. This, so is, what I, this, right, this well, is what I believe. Well, I guess, so. I guess I would say that that even before defining it, that most people assume that everybody on lamp mode is reformed. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should deal with that question first. <laughs> um, no. Or are you reform? No. Uh, well, uh, let me let me say this. I have to agree with you that the lack of zeal, you know, uh, for the topic, has I guess uh, has created some ignorance on my part. At the same time, there are aspects of reformed theology that I amen. Mm -hmm. There are aspects of reformed theology that I'm less likely to be um, dogmatic about, and some a few that I don't know if they're necessarily core beliefs of Reformed theology, but spring out of that the theological mindset that I absolutely disagree with. Um, okay, be be before, we, before we dive into that, yeah. when you hear Reformed theology, what do you hear? To me, I hear... Concise. Yeah, mm -hmm. in my opinion, and, and some of this may be ignorance, but I almost equate it with Calvinism um, and other doctrines that's, that kind of branch out of Calvinistic thought. Oh, so the five points, Tulip? Yes. Oh, if, if that's how we're defining Reformed theology, then yes, I'm Reformed. Yeah. If that's I, how we define I hold the reform, tulip. I believe reform Tulip is biblical. Me, then I would say See, yes. for me, I'm part, like, like, it depends on how we also define Tulip. <laughs> Here's what I mean. <laughs> right. Uh, because we can go through the points and I can say, yes, I agree, because it's in the scripture, but this creates questions that, and we've had this conversation, and I don't want to go for 15 minutes, right. but, but this creates questions that I can't dogmatically say I've got it figured out because it really is divine mystery. To some mm. extent, even though the Lord reveals certain mysteries to us, I'm not so much into creating these equations. I just kind of, honestly, and I think some of it's from the messianic perspective, we just kind of leave certain things to God and say, you know, we have a mission, this is what it is, and these are the doctrines we hold to that are absolutely essential, and the rest of it God figures out. So, uh, and there I'm are kind of and, and limited atonement, for example, I, I completely uh, would not, I can't say I'm, I'm a tulip guy because limited atonement is something I, I, I can't see, in, uh, according to my understanding right. uh, of God's plan of salvation, both with Yom Kippur and then fulfillment. Uh, the atonement uh, of Jesus. Uh, You're not a Christian. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just playing. Know, know. You know, I'm just playing. Okay. I'm just playing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm take this serious. Um, for myself, like I agree with the five points, um, but from my understanding, Reformed theology is even deeper than that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. your eschatological view, mm. you know, a lot of other things. Yeah. One, I, I don't really like defining myself as a Calvinist mm -hmm. or I just believe what the scriptures teach. Um, now, obviously, when I'm in some circles talking to some people, I'll use it because I know it's going to help you understand where I stand. Mm -hmm. right. But I really don't like to say, like, I believe in Reformed theology or I'm a Calvinist. I just believe the text. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of on the same tip. Like, because I think with, depending, like, especially if you don't know who you're talking to, mm -hmm. like, you might run into the issue of, you throw out this term that has a definition and has been historically mm -hmm. understood this way for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you know, this other person thinks it means something else. And then like you get into this debate and you're using this term and you say it so comfortably and you right. think that you're on the same page. And then you get somewhere in the conversation, you're like, wait, hold up. 
Now, what do you mean by that? You know <laughs> exactly. what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. And, right. and so, like, I try to use terms that are either in the Bible or whatever, or or just be more like define my terms and stuff like that. Because I think I think for a lot of people, when you use the term Reformed theology, or you use the term Calvin, or you use the term Tulip, or whatever, they automatically flash back to either some bad experience they had with somebody, or some <laughs> right. good experience yeah. they had with somebody. Or you know this this definition they came up with or whatever, mm -hmm. and then for the rest of the conversation, you guys are are doing this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I try to leave that stuff out and just use terms to describe what I believe mm -hmm. outside of traditional Reformed theological terms or whatever, right. just to make sure that we're on the same page and we get to where we're going. Um, and that joint mm -hmm. on the forerun in terms of eschatology, that joint on the forerunner album definitely would exclude you from the Reformed. Camp and I'm not, right. I'm not, not getting into oh, yeah, issues of in. pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, or, uh, or a millennial, pre-millennial. Yeah. Right. I think right. just based on certain eschatological views, I would say Hazakim is definitely not uh, reformed. And so I, I guess that would be hmm. a, a bit of news to a lot of Lamp Mode supporters that yeah. we're not all <laughs> on the same page, but we have right. harmony. Absolutely, actually, we're all one for the common <laughs> Absolutely. goal. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What if we? What if we? Since we all know, we always say, "I." Right, we know what the tulip is. Mm. What if we walk through each one of those particular doctrines and say, do you believe in this doctrine? Yes, no, and yeah. kind of concise. Oh, man, don't do that, Jason. Mm. Uh, I, no, I think that's good. <laughs> I'm going to put me good. in the corner. Go I think ahead. that's good. <laughs> but but let, let me say this first. I, I think that, so when, when, I, when I think about tulip, um, another way that I would put that, mm -hmm. like, is the absolute supremacy and sovereignty of God <laughs> over all things, including salvation. Mm -hmm. To me, that, that's what, that, that's like the umbrella that Tulip falls under. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and so, w would we all agree with that? That, that, that God is completely sovereign. Oh, man. You're, you're like <laughs> leading me into it. I want to see, I want to see where, where our common ground is first, and then maybe we can begin to talk about where we, I where say we split yes. off. I that, that God is yes. completely sovereign is over all things, including salvation. But you see the way you word it. You've kind of, you've, you've made certain assumptions about those who would disagree with aspects of TULIP and mm -hmm. saying that they don't believe God is absolutely sovereign. See, for me, mm -hmm. here's, 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 here's my issue. I believe God is sovereign. Obviously, Scripture makes it clear, and Paul made very clear. They sovereign points. over and salvation. And we can have conversation off camera as well. Okay. Like, just because I have questions, and maybe you have answers. Okay. Um, but I also don't see... Don't run from the camera. Guys. Okay. <laughs> don't run from the camera. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to cause anyone to, to, you know, to, to, to stumble or be offended. Mm. Right. Um, but... There are also scriptures that, I mean, I've heard explanations where, you know, like every, every theological point can answer, can refute the other point. That's also in scripture. But, but that's where, see, to me, so you have the Arminians and you have, for example, the Calvinists about issues of, of, of salvation and election, and they both have mastered the ability to create, you know, these uh, rebuttals. But mm. that, doesn't, that doesn't deal with the fact that there are seeming, and I'm not saying they are, but there's seemingly uh, a seeming dichotomy in scripture mm -hmm. that I think ultimately it, it, that those mysteries lie with God. And to me, right. that's where I'm not dogmatic about it because I believe ultimately we'll find out one day and I think, we'll both, I think both, both camps will be surprised at how much we didn't know mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. how much, and maybe, you know, maybe it's one of those things we'll never know completely because mm -hmm. God is infinitely wise and, and uh, so... But yes, I do. So let's get to some specifics. Let's let's get to some specifics. <laughs> okay. Okay. C. Total depravity. Amen. Uh, okay. We 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 agree with that. Man's radical corruption and fallenness into sin in such a way that he is unable in and of himself to pull himself out of his corruption. Yes. I yes. Agree with that. Uh, yes. Yes, I, 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 I believe that we're that we're totally depraved. Okay, but I think sometimes that that the T leads to assumptions in other areas where okay. where well, we're gonna walk through all of it. That's why we. Okay. So the T stands for total, total depravity, depravity, which means which means man's radical corruption and fallenness. That the fall has affected every aspect of man's being in such a way that he is unable in and of himself 
to pull himself out. Amen. And we always say we agree Amen. just oh, to no that doubt, point. No doubt, no doubt. Okay. Okay. The you, unconditional election, that is that, that God in eternity past chose to save a group of people otherwise known as the elect, and, and that choice on God's part had nothing to do with um, any work, merit, or even foreseen faith on the part of the one being chosen, but that God himself and God alone made that decision. I agree. For me, with, with, yes. that, without a view towards anything that we would do. Okay, for me, and I know a lot of people are going to be calling Hazakim the heretics, but here we go. <laughs> for me, I would, I would agree. However, a lot of the filler that you put in, uh -huh. and I know it's based on scripture, uh, but they're isolated scriptures that there are other, and see, this, this, for me, it's just one of those things, I've read both sides, I've heard both sides, but there are other scriptures you could pull out um, where all, that's where I kind of, I, I commit, but not completely because it's something that I don't understand. Okay. And I know that I've heard the, the, the explanations of God's secret will and his revealed will and our, you know, like all, all these sorts of things. But to me, that's just, we're, we're using extra biblical language to convey something that's really mysterious. So I, you understand what okay. I'm saying? But yes, I do agree right. that, that the Lord is sovereign and that before the foundation of the earth, we, he called us. And, but I don't know how that works in relation to... Uh, Go proceed. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to keep you're going good. because. Right. No, you're fine. And I've and, but I've heard you know I've heard uh, Sproul and a lot of other I've I've, I've heard their 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 positions. So it's not like I'm uninformed in some of these sure. areas. I, I just tread lightly on those really grand things that uh, really. Okay. So 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 for the you you would say. But the a qualified 75 yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's, that's cool. No, 100 percent yes, but but I think we would disagree on how that works out. But go ahead. Okay. He's he's saying he agrees, but he can't define how that flushes itself out. Yeah. Okay. So directly how it works in relation to everything. How would you? Uh, Excellent. Mm -hmm. L, the dreaded L. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Limited atonement, which I, which I think is just a horrible. That's a horrible phrase to describe what what the reality of it is. Um, how I would define limited atonement is what is, what was God's purpose in sending his son? What was God the Father's purpose in sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross? There's two camps generally that people fall into. Either A, God the Father sent the son in order to make salvation possible for everybody, right? The, the L would say that, no, actually, God sent his son not to make salvation possible for everybody, but to actually secure salvation for the elect, for those that were chosen before the foundation of the world. I would agree with that. Yeah, I'd be in the second camp. I would okay. be... Here we go again. Um, I would be. You're becoming like, more and more reformed. The yeah, more. you are. You're very See, reformed. that's what I'm talking about. Everybody says I'm reformed. I'm like, what are you talking about? See, but anyways, go ahead. For me, when I look at at God's, you know, first revelation through the Torah and the Tanakh, and then the fulfillment in the New Testament, what you see on like the Day of Atonement is that God made national atonement available to Israel. Mm -hmm. on the Day of Atonement through the sacrifice, which pointed to, really, the work of Messiah. Mm -hmm. To Israel and only Israel. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Not yeah, to the Gentiles. Yeah, but that's true, but it was, it was available to the whole nation. But it was... But, well, but, but it didn't but apply only, to everyone in the nation. But only the nation. Oh, yeah. No, so, but not, so it was limited to it, Israel. Well, you could say that. Well, there are even... I, I don't even know, know if that's necessarily correct, because Israel was called to be a nation of priests, and that's a whole other... You, be, you, believe, you believe the atonement was, was for the Gentile nations as well? Uh, the on day the of, day, day of, of atonement, atonement, it was it was national atonement, but Israel's intercession, and and these are things we can get into sure, afterwards. Okay. But 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 I believe that that Israel's intercession intercession to God as a nation of priests w had meaning for the Gentiles as well, and and, and that'll open up. But here's my point: okay. that national atonement was available for Israel, but was every Israelite saved, or was every Israelite right. that every Israelite realize mm -hmm. that atonement on the day right. of atonement? No. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I believe that salvation is available to the whole human race, but not everyone realizes it. Um, and I don't think, to me, th those two, A and B, don't necessarily contradict each other. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, to me, they're both kind of kind of true. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We'll talk about that off yeah. camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's and, I, and I would yeah. and I would jump on just to just to kind of amen that as well. Like, right. Because I don't I don't yeah. I don't necessarily dis. It, it depends on how, how you're how you're defining available. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe it's. Yeah. It would even, I would even say possible. Yes. I, 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 okay. So you're saying. Uh, okay. So then you yes. will fall into the first camp. That, yeah. Well, that no, no, God no, no, no. But but I do. Sent yeah, the see, that's, yeah. That's the that's the the murkiness, right? Not the murkiness, but I think that's where the the definitions start to determine, like you know, what I'm like saying where, like, where you would fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, because I, like I'm. Cause that's why I would say, eh, I'm not reformed, but like, I, but at the same time, you would say, oh, okay, so you're reformed, but cause right. like I would say, like I would agree with him and say, like, no, it's like God has extended this call to everybody. However, at the same time, like you know, depending on whether you're looking at it through man's eyes or God's eyes, mm -hmm. like there is only a certain few cats that it's not like God's surprised when so and so comes to but the see, Lord. See, then that could be foreknowledge versus election. When you yeah. say he's not surprised. And see, that's where, to me, it does get murky, and I tread lightly. And, and, and here's what I'm saying. Um, even in terms of, of, of you know, election and, and it being available to everyone, um, there are scriptures that seem to indicate, you know, without use of theological terms like his secret, you know, counsel and secret will, but scriptures that seem to indicate that the Lord calls on all men to repent and the, uh, the ability to do so is there. Now, we can, we can argue based on other scriptures and then create kind of, uh, you know, we can that's, harmonize that's, it. Now, see, that goes back to the T. Yeah, yeah, I, then, I understand. Because well, yeah. if, the, if the ability is there, then, then the T no, is not the not ability on the our own, but, but the Holy Spirit. See, God gives humanity, in my opinion, and I think according to scripture, a measure of grace mm -hmm. in that the, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. God is gracious mm -hmm. to humanity. Um, I don't think it necessarily goes in, in, into the T. I think that the Lord is a just God. And I think scripture does make it clear that he extends life and death and we have a choice to make. However, I agree. However, uh, and, and see, maybe some of these terms need to just be but, defined in uh, such yeah, a way where I can right. amen everything I think you're the, saying. But, I think the, what we're talking about specifically is salvation. Yeah. Right? So we're talking about, um, we know God calls all men to repentance. And I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I I'm not, I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah. for the sake of everybody. Clarity, like, go ahead. Yeah, we know God calls all men to repentance. I mean, I mean, that's clear cut in the text, you know what I mean? <clears throat> but just because he's calling all men to repentance doesn't mean that all men but are going that to repent. That's he's true. enabled all and, men and to repent. And you could also say just because he's not willing that anyone should perish doesn't mean that his, and see, that's when you get into, well, that's one will, he has another will. To me, these things... It's so yeah, mysterious just, yeah. that all these explanations, they're really using extra biblical language that's not necessarily found in scripture. To me, they fall at the wayside. At the, ultimately, all I can do is throw up my hands and say, Lord, you're so grand, you're so amazing, you're so infinite, I don't understand how it works. Right, mm -hmm. For me to create equations to explain it, it's fine, but I, don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I won't die on that hill. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. That, that, that's where, like, to me, and ultimately, mm -hmm. in terms of personal application, who the Lord choose, if, if the Lord does absolutely choose some for heaven and chooses some for hell, it doesn't affect me anyway. I'm called see, to preach the gospel. But just because you, but hold, the but hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. But now you're talking about something double that I wouldn't agree. Exactly. I, I know, but, but so I'm I saying, wouldn't agree with double predestination. My point, though, is that ultimately some of these things are in God's hands. Absolutely. Goal, our, right. And that's where, and I think that's one of my problems is when believers become divided on these right. issues. Well, it's, exactly. I mean, it's, it's it's, it's the question of, you know, you know, Deuteronomy 29, 29, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord, but those that have been revealed, revealed. belong to his, our, yeah. his, his children, sure. us and his children, and our children forever, and right? It was revealed in scripture, so in your right. opinion, it right. belongs right. to right. us. Right, so, so that's the question, well, what, yeah. what is it that God has revealed and what is it that Well, that I think he he's revealed it, but how and, it and works, I don't know if he has revealed how right. it works. And that's right. where I think theologians try to explain how it works. And I would agree to some degree that he hasn't revealed in how all of that works. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I would agree that um, God, by his spirit, draws men to repentance. But inside of that, a choice is made, but not, the choice isn't made. Like, I don't know how that works. Like, we know God draws men and then, ah, he's awake and he's alive. Boom, now he responds to what he's been drawn by. Yeah. But I, I can't give 
it's to, yeah. I, you know exactly. what I mean? I admit exactly yeah, yeah. everything like, you just said, then. but it's to me, it's just one of those things where, where right? Where I'm like, I'm not trying to, I'm understand. not even talking about the inner. I can't. I don't think nobody can perfectly define all the inner workings of right. how God has done everything on the basis of salvation. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and without getting how, philosophical, since God does dwell outside, I mean, he. Well, I should say this: He created time and space. Even his eternal nature to me is something that I'm baffled at. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. I think from his, if if, if you had. And without sounding blasphemous, but if from if you had God's perspective and you were able to see from His vantage point, it would probably make a whole lot more sense. Mm. Yeah. Because He's not con- confined to this time space mm. dimension that we're in. He's beyond all that. He created time. So and what's space. the next mm. letter? I. 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 Ir- irresistible grace. Yeah. Mm. I think this kind of goes back into what we were just saying, yeah. as far as just like yeah, like well yeah. Go ahead. Actually, I'm gonna let you define it right. first before. We- um. So irresistible grace is the idea that um, that God's determination to save the elect moves into the realm of the heart where the heart is actually changed before or yeah, so, so the idea is that the heart is changed, enabling the sinner to now freely choose and trust in God. Hold on. And that without that, <laughs> without that prior heart change, the sinner will never come. No doubt. Yeah. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I thought that irresistible grace was, and maybe we're saying the same thing, was that person... Um, will do nothing else but respond. Right. The, do you the, understand? Yeah. I, yeah. So, so the person who... Okay, so the person who's been chosen before the foundation of the world... Right. Right. The Holy Spirit changes that person's heart mm-hmm. in such a way that their eyes become open, their heart of stone is removed and uh, replaced with the heart of flesh... Their eyes are opened, and at that point, they trust, and, and they, they must trust because their eyes have been opened. Right, so there's no other option. Right, mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, that's why I wanted to define that they particularly, see, it, because it, it, it says yeah. that the person who is elect will choose, period. Mm-hmm. Like, you've see, been that's elected, where they're all kind of linked. Cho- so I admit mm-hmm. it, but again, I think certain terms... Certain terms I wrestle with being dogmatic about. For example, that goes back to unlimited, or, you know, or limited atonement. Mm-hmm. Uh, it almost goes right back to that. Like, they are all linked. They are. They are. They are. So for me, I amen it to an extent, but then there are certain, in my opinion, and I'm trying to word this mm-hmm. carefully, not saying this is scripture, but I think there are certain assumptions made based on proof texts that sort of ne- negate other proof texts that could be okay. used to make maybe another point. So it seems like a multifaceted, a multifaceted, complex issue. And okay. again, so proceed though. Okay, uh, right. No, that's fine. But I just wanted to make that clear so that it would be right. But go we, ahead. We, are we do? Are we in agreement with that last point? I agree with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, so then P. Last one. <laughs> this is the last one. Perseverance, which is, uh, I, I think, preservation is, is a better term. Mm. But the idea that the one who has now come and trusted in Christ is secure by the Holy Spirit. He who began a good work <laughs> will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And that person cannot, the person who has been saved, cannot lose their salvation, that God himself will keep that person and bring them all the way to glory. I would say I definitely agree with that, but I want to preface it for those who probably have a mis- misinformed idea of it that that does not mean that a person is going to live a life um, in complete shambles and that they just cool and they go to heaven. Um, I think the perseverance also, um, or preservation, Preservation. Mm -hmm. also um, speaks to the sanctification of that believer. So Mm -hmm. that believer is also being sanctified through the process as they're being... um, Right, so they're, so they're justified, 
they're being sanctified, Absolutely. and then they will be glorified. Absolutely. So all the, so so the idea of, of preservation or perseverance is that all those who have been justified will, by God's grace, Absolutely. be sanctified and make it to glorification. Yes. Mm-hmm. Will yes. we agree with Amen. that? I just want to. Can I read one text? Not yeah. necessarily to prove this. This. Right. But I'm more so than proving the point. I'm more so um, concerned about the people that. Um, because most people who don't agree with this don't agree because they say you're giving a person a license to wild out. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm more so not to say, oh, this is what the Bible says about that. But this is just one of the texts that rock me, if I can remember. Well, it's Hebrews chapter 10. This is like one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Mm. Um, verse 14, it just says, for by a single offering, he has perfected for all time, those who are being sanctified. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously the single offering is Jesus Christ. And the text says that he has perfected, meaning this perfection, this this has already been done, right? And it says for all time, but then it includes those who are being sanctified. So when we talk about the people not losing their salvation, it goes hand in hand with the person who's also walking in sanctification. Mm-hmm. They work together. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, according to the text, he's perfected for all times those who are being sanctified. Mm-hmm. So the being sanctified and the have been perfected mm-hmm. go together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, so and, and, and as we close, I, I think this is, the, this is the beautiful part about it is that we can come together as brothers in Christ from different backgrounds, even different theological persuasions. And because we have a common goal, which is the glory of Christ seen through the salvation and the building up of his people, like, like we, can, we, can, we can be on the same label and, yes, and, and, right. and it, it can be love. Um, and we are not going to jump you after the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I don't think we can. It's a big dude right here. I, <laughs> I wouldn't even try. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's a very good point. Like, Because I know people assume that everybody on lamp mode has, they say lamp mode is this. Right. And that's right. so yeah. unreal right. because we all different people. We all wrestling with the text differently and we bouncing off one another. Yeah. We, and I appreciate this discourse. Yeah, and I would good. also say that on the... That uh, to reiterate, and I think that many people should know this, but I would say that um, the essentials we stand firm oh, on, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. these issues, the 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 difference isn't as great as it is. It, mm. it may seem. Absolutely, we stand together as brothers. Absolutely, yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.